This is August making too much noise. Twenty first, nineteen eighty four. This is Joe Todd and Bernice Jackson, an interview with Nellie Fester Alexander. Okay. Ma'am, where were you born? Uh, six miles north of Fargo, Oklahoma. <clears throat> October the 27th, 1907. 1907. Who was your father? Bill Fessler. Bill Fessler? Yes. And who was your mother? Maggie Fessler. What was her maiden name? Uh, Thompson. Thompson. Where were they from? Missouri. Missouri. Around New Cambry. Okay. When did they come to Oklahoma? In early in 1907. How come they came here? Well, they just wanted to move away from Missouri, I guess. Bought a farm and moved here. Mm -hmm. They bought the farm there by Fargo? Yes, six miles north. Okay. Do you remember your grandparents? Yes. Were either one of your grandfathers in the Civil War? No. Mm. Were they from Missouri also? Yes, they lived in Missouri. Okay. Did they tell you any stories when they were kids? I never was around them very much because yeah. I was raised here and we didn't get back there very often. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a little girl, what kind of chores did you do on the farm? Milk cows, <laughs> fed calves, and pigs, worked in the field with mules. Did you plow? Yes, cultivated. How many acres could you plow in one day? I really don't know. Probably five or six, I yeah. suppose. Do you prefer plowing with horses or mules? Mules. How come? I don't know. I, that was what my dad had, and that was what I worked. You ever raised cotton? No. Never picked cotton then? I have, yes, in later years. In later years? Mm hmm After I was married. Yeah. Okay. Where'd you start school? Uh, about four and a half miles north of Fargo to Pleasant Hill. And that was where I went to school. I never did get to go to high school. Was it a one-room school? Yes. How many students were in the school? Oh, probably from 10 to 15. What did the inside of the schoolroom look like? Oh, uh, we sat in seats uh, where there were two of us sit together, and we had classes. Uh, the teacher would call the class up, and we had long benches in the front of the schoolhouse, in the, and uh, that's where we would sit. And on Fridays, uh, we would always have a spelling match. This was our entertainment. Yeah. How far did you go through school? How many years? I went uh, two years through the eighth grade. That was all we had there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there any organized activities in the school so to support the World War I effort? Yes. Uh, my mother and some of the other ladies would go and they, won't, they would cut little pieces of cloth for uh, gun cleaners hmm. and other little pieces of material that they would use for yeah. hospitals and so on. Did you do anything in school during the war, specifically for the war? No, I don't remember anything that we did. Okay. What about Armistice Day, the day the war ended? Oh, I remember that. Tell me about it. Well. There was quite a celebration, and I remember when the boys came home. We used to go to Fargo and and uh, meet the trains when the boys would come through, and they were all waving. Mm -hmm. Was there a big victory parade in Fargo after the war ended? Oh, I think so, as uh, best I remember. But I don't remember too much about it, yeah. you know. Okay. And where did you meet your husband? Well, I met my first husband in Fargo. He was a barber. What was his name? Willis Ridings. Hmm. 
We were married in 1926, and we had three boys. Where did you live at that time? In Fargo? No. Uh, after we were married, we lived in Woodward, and then went to California for about five years. Um, when you first came to Woodward, how big was the town? Oh, I don't know. Uh, probably 3,000, I suppose. When did you first move to Woodward? Uh, in 1925. 25. When we were married. Okay. We were married in July. What did the there. main street of Woodward look like? Oh, about like it does now, but then there's new business that's gone in. Were the streets paved then? Yes. Mm -hmm. What did your husband do? Uh, he worked for uh, the Ford company up here. Mm -hmm. Selling cars? Uh, no, he was a mechanic. Okay. Mm -hmm. When did you go to California? In 1929, I believe it was. 1929. Mm -hmm. How come you went to California? Well, the work just got slack here, and... Uh, was it after the stock market crash? I suppose I didn't know too much about that then. <laughs> but times were getting kind of hard. Yeah. And uh, we went out there. What part did you, did you settle in, in California? We worked up and down the coast, and from the vegetables and the cotton, and back up north in the fruit. Tell me exactly, how were those camps organized? Uh, people lived in tents, mostly. That was in the southern part, and then, of course, we had a tent that we lived in as we moved on up and down the coast. Yeah. Who owned the, who owned the camps, the tents? Who did you work for? Uh, I don't remember the names of the yeah. people. But did the landowner own the tents and the camps, or were they separate? No, everybody owned their own tent. Oh, so you owned your own tent? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And how did you travel from camp to camp? Well, we had a little star car that we used, mm -hmm. and it had a, oh, a commercial body on the back, and we lived in that. What's a commercial body? Oh, kind of like these bread trucks have okay. with the long bodies. Kind of like know. a van? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. How big was the tent? Oh, ours was about uh, six by ten, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Now, do they have designated areas that you set your tent up yes. in each camp? When they have a camp. Okay, they, they have running water there for you? No. You had to carry your own water in canteens. I suppose no, in, no indoor toilets. Oh, no. <laughs> what kind of fields did you work in mainly in California? Uh, when we were down in the south, we picked peas and weeded onions. And then as we went north, we chopped cotton and then went on up in the fruit. And uh, my husband picked the fruit, and I packed up mm -hmm. north of San Francisco. What was your salary out in California? What were you making? Not very much. You picked by the pound on the cotton. And I don't. I don't remember how much it was a pound. Did you consider yourself an Oki at that time? Sure did. What were the <coughs> Californians' reaction to the Okies? <laughs> well, they didn't like them too good. I was chopping cotton one day, and I came to the end of the field, and there was a man standing there at the end of the field. And he was watching me. And when I walked out to the end, he said, uh, You're from Oklahoma, aren't you? I said, Yes, why? <laughs> he said, I never saw such working people in my life as there is that comes from Oklahoma. He was satisfied with your work <laughs> then. So. Mm -hmm. Was there much resentment against the Yokies in California? Oh, I don't think a whole lot, because uh, they needed the workers. Mm -hmm. 
because I've heard stories about that the word oaky was a bad word in California. Yes, it was. Why did it have that connotation? Why was it a bad word? Well, a lot of people that came out from Oklahoma came in old cars and with a lot of things hanging around the side, wash tubs and such as this, you know, they had a hard time. And uh, they just didn't like the looks of them. Of course, I guess everybody's idea is the movie The Grapes of Wrath, when the Joes went to California, mm -hmm. where there are many people that look like the Joes. Yes. With all the stuff yes. on the car and the pickup. On the cars. And that's where the connotation came from. You can't okay. blame them, that's though, for taking their, what they did have. That work. was all they had, a lot yes. of them. You yes. know, they starved out here and they had to go someplace to work. Yeah. And they took mm -hmm. everything they could take. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So how long did you stay in California? About five years. About five years. How come you came back to Oklahoma? Well, I had got sick and had typhoid fever and was in the hospital out there at Bakersfield for quite a while. And I wasn't able to work and I was getting homesick anyway. So we decided to come back. Mm -hmm. Could you give me in your own words your reflections on your time in California? Did you enjoy it? Well, yes, I did. We met a lot of people, and you see a lot of country. And I really enjoyed the work. Mm -hmm. What do you think you gained from that experience? Well, I don't know. It's knowing that you uh, was able to do something besides what we did here in Oklahoma, you know, you see the country, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. You had your family with you. And I you just had one son then, one son. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then when I came back to Oklahoma, uh, we had uh, three more little boys. Or two more boys then. <clears throat> what did you do when you got back to Oklahoma? Oh, we lived out north of Woodward for a while. And then we lived southwest of Woodward a while. Did you rent? Rent land? Yes. Just uh -huh. rent. We just rented a place to live. <clears throat> what did you do during World War II? Well, um, my first husband and I separated, and uh, I married a man that lived uh, southwest of Fort Supply, about six miles. And um, what was his name? Henry Alexander. Do you have his, her first husband's yes, name? Yeah. And then we had two more boys. So I had five boys. Well, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, we moved down to a farm about three and a half miles north of Fargo, and uh, our first son was born there, Jimmy. And uh, then his dad lived out southwest of Fort Supply. His name was Bob Alexander. And uh, then we moved up there where I live now, about six miles southwest of Supply. Mm -hmm. And we had another little boy. Did you farm up there? Yes, he mm -hmm. had farmland. Mm -hmm. What did you raise in the farm? Wheat and Wheat. row crop. Mm -hmm. uh, at wheat harvest at that time, did you have the combine? Yes. When did the combines first hit this part of the country? I don't really know for sure. 
I suppose, let's see, I came back from California in uh, 35, and I, they were running combines then, so I don't really know for sure. Was the Depression still pretty bad back here in 35? Yes. Tell me about the dust storm. Well, they were having those terrible dust storms then, and uh, when I came home, uh, in March in 35 from California <clears throat> uh, I lived with mom and dad for a while till my husband came back and uh, at night she would cover the the uh, milk and stuff in the kitchen with papers you know newspapers what did the dust storm look like well the one that came from the north uh, that time in, um, well, that was in 35 when that terrible. That was Black Sunday? Yes. Yeah. I remember that very well. What did that storm look like when it was approaching? Just like a big dark wall. Uh, you, you couldn't see, you couldn't tell because it was from the ground up, you know, just, just dirt rolling. I've often wondered how could that much dust start blowing? What I don't caused know. the dust storms? Well, just the wind and the and the uh, ground. Of course, they didn't have so much irrigation then, and the, all the fields in the north plowed. You see, and they just I guess just got started. But that was a terrible Sunday. It was so dark that you couldn't see. Did you and your husband have much trouble getting through the rest of the Depression, getting Mr. Alexander? Oh, no, not a whole lot. Um, of course, we lost some crops, but hail, and then we both went to work at the hospital at Fort Supply. Hmm. And that saved the country. That hospital saved the country out there, you know. People. What were your duties at the hospital? I worked in the food service. I was going to ask, what would the farmers do to try to save the topsoil from the dust storms? Would they do anything special? Just cultivate as much as they could, about all they could do, till the rain came. Mm -hmm. Then they began uh, building terraces, you know, and... Uh, they put shelter belts in out here? Or the rows of trees along the section lines? Yes, uh-huh. Yes, they did. Was that... A CCC project, WPA project. Who, who sponsored that? Well, I don't know. I think the government did. Was furnished that, the trees. Was that a stuff. WPA project? And you know, the works progress. I don't know. Now the WPA was uh, road work. Yeah. Would that have been a CCC project then? Civilian mm -hmm. Conservation Corps. Yes, CCC did everything but work yeah. the roads. Okay. You remember. Did your husband do any work for the WPA or CCC? Yes, he did. What did he do? Before I was married to him, he worked over on the road north of May, uh, north of uh, Gage, what they call them, Main Gage Road. Mm -hmm. What did he do on the roads? Uh, he worked with his teams, built roads with teams then, you know. <clears throat> they didn't have the county graders, I guess, then. How long did those WPA projects last? Well, I don't know, but several years, I guess, because this was while we were in California. Mm -hmm. And I don't know for sure. Okay. What were you doing on December 7th, 1941? December the 7th. That's Pearl Harbor Day. Oh, yes. I was sitting at the sewing machine sewing when I had my radio on and I heard this. And that was really a terrible thing. Yeah, what was your reaction? Well, I don't know, hardly. You just wonder how soon they was coming on over here, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I thought how awful that was. Did you do any work for the war effort during World War II? Oh, uh... No, not really. Well, I did. 
during the time they had the tornado here, I came up here and helped my husband help to find the people. Yeah, tell me about the tornado, 1947. How bad was that? That was awful. Did you see the tornado? No, it was after night. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, that evening, uh, out at our house, of course, we was out at the edge of it, you might say. It didn't do any damage out there. But it rained and hailed that night, and I was going around through the house trying to find some pillows to put in our south windows. I just knew the windows was going to go out. And uh, I walked in my little kitchen, which was on the east, and just a, we had a little, just a little ledge along the little kitchen window above my sink. And there was a hail hit that window and knocked a little bottle of aspirin out in the middle of the floor. And that was really scary. <laughs> I couldn't, you know, it just seemed like it was hailing all around the house that night. From all directions. Yes, it was. It was terrible. And what did you, you and your husband do in Woodward? Well, uh, then... After this uh, while, I heard the tell we were on a party line, and I heard a, a ring, and I went to the telephone, and uh, it was a lady that lived down south of us calling her sister-in-law that lived just east of us a little ways, and she said, there's been a terrible storm in Woodward. She said there was a tornado, and she said there's stuff laying all over the streets. And she said, we're going back. And uh, so my husband had just gone to bed, but he got right up and he said, well, he said, they'll need help. And uh, our neighbor lived down the road about two miles from us south. And he said, if I can get him to go with me, he said, um, if he can get up here and I can get the tractor started, he said, I can pull his truck to the north, to the highway that was to north to 270. So he called him, and this man got his truck up there, and Henry got his tractor started, and they went, came up, and worked all night. And then the next day he came home the next morning and wanted me to get the little boys, and we came back up. It was a terrible sight. What did you do when you came to Woodward? Well, I helped out. They had a building out at the airport then that, where they had used clothing uh, or clothing for people that needed it. And I went out there and helped a couple of days to sort clothes. And How many were killed in that tornado? It seems to me like there was over 100. Was there any warning at all that it was coming? I don't think very much of a warning. Mm -hmm. How many were injured? I don't know. Yeah. A lot of them. We went to the hospital here in Old Moreland, and it was a pitiful sight. You see those little children laying in little beds there, and some of them had broken arms and legs. And, and the, of course, the nurses and doctors were working as fast as they could, you know. But mm -hmm. a lot of them, they didn't know who they belonged to. It was pitiful. Hmm. How much of Woodward did it tear up? Well, the west and the north came through up on the hill and took that side and then went on down. Mm -hmm. What have you done since, and what have you done in the 50s and 60s, you and your husband? Well, I worked at the hospital at Supply mm -hmm. for near 19 years. How much of the old fort is still standing, old fort supply? Oh, there's quite a few buildings left there yet. They've tore down a bunch of them and moved them away. Mm -hmm. But there's still... When was the that post abandoned by the military? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know the date. Okay. Do you have any questions? Um, do you know Mrs. Um, I can't think of her name. Runs the museum there. 
at Fort uh, Supply on Main Street. Oh, uh, Deweese. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. um, she was telling me about uh, finding some unusual rocks out on her place. Have you seen those rocks? No, I haven't been in her museum. I ought to be ashamed, but I haven't never been in uh -huh. her. <clears throat> but I know her. Uh -huh. Well, I just wondered if you could tell, give us a little, know anything about the formation of the soil around Fort Sply. Seems like there's a lot of history around Fort Sply. Yes. And uh, the early days there was a telegraph line went from Fort Supply to Dodge City. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't know anything about that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anything else you want to talk about? I don't know that I can think of right off hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Go to the cave. And John said no, they didn't want to go to the cave. But my mother and me and my son, we all went to the cave <laughs> till it blew over. Mm -hmm. And then when we went home that day, uh, my dad and some more fellows had went to Fargo, and uh, he said when they was coming home, uh, they seen this coming just north of Fargo there, and they just stopped their car and got out and went and got under a bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, we were at home. My husband and I had just got our house clean, thick and span. You know, it was so pretty that morning. And we were sitting out on the back steps thinking about taking a walk. And we saw the rabbits and the tumbleweeds are going by mm -hmm. the corner of the house and birds. And uh, uh, John was the first one to see it. And I said, oh my, there's a storm coming. We all ran to the corner of the house and there was this big black cloud way up in the sky, uh -huh. just black as your black as hat you ever saw, with the rolling um, dirt, down dirt there. just just rolling at you, and all colors. Mm -hmm. Since it happened, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. And uh, Bryce, we had a windmill in the backyard, and he said, uh, uh, "You you and John go up to the house. I'll go turn the windmill off." Well. Uh, time we got in on the porch and into the kitchen, uh, I couldn't see a thing. Mm -hmm. I had hold of John's hand, but I remembered where a chair was sitting in the kitchen. And uh, I went to that chair, found it, sat down and put John on my lap. I could not see his face before me. I couldn't see mm -hmm. him. It was just a vacuum, black, oh, it was terrible. And Bryce didn't come in for quite a little bit, and I got worried about him. And uh, I didn't know whether to go and hunt for him, and I didn't. I just thought, well, I'd better just sit here, maybe for a little while longer, anyway. And he spoke, and he was right beside of me. And he says, "Where are you?" And I reached out and touched him. And we couldn't see each other. Mm -hmm. We absolutely could not see each other. And pretty soon. He kind of knelt down there by the chair by me, and pretty soon he got choking. You know, it was hard to breathe. Mm -hmm. I know. And uh, uh, he managed to get into the oil stove. We had one of those um, perfection oil stove, four burners, you mm -hmm. know, with the oven that set off. Mm -hmm. And he managed to get a pan of water and set on this oil stove, and he lit the burner. And he swore he didn't have a burner lit, but uh, it was just the least tiny little flame you ever saw. By that time, it was kind of letting up, see. And uh, he heated this water and got his nose right down over the water, and that helped him to breathe. And I don't know how long that total blackness lasted. It seemed like an awful long time. but. Uh, not over 10 15 minutes till you can begin to see outlines of objects in the house and then it blew the wind blew and the dirt blew 
all the rest of the afternoon. And when we were making one of our trips up to the Mayo Clinic, we went through North and South Dakota, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just kind of made a trip around. And there, uh, North, I think it was North, might have been South Dakota, I can't remember. There was just this old black dirt, and it just layers, you know, mm -hmm. just layers. And I said, Bryce, that looks like that dirt that we had uh, Black Sunday. And uh, he said, oh, that's rocks. And I said, well, let's stop and look and see. He got out, and he could just run his finger in as the 